Hi, my name is Nandan Singhani, and I'll be going over Lab 5 of Physics 2212, which is titled Magnetic Breaking with Faraday. The main purpose of Lab 5 was to observe and model the interaction between a falling bar magnet within a tube of aluminum foil. The objective of Lab 5 was to collect data of the time taken for a magnet to fall through a conductive tube of aluminum foil. We'll then model the magnet-tube interaction computationally and compare computational predictions with observed data. The resulting average experimental time taken for the magnet to fall through the aluminum foil was 2.196 seconds, while the calculated time came out to be 2.987 seconds. The main physics principles used in Lab 5 include Faraday's law, which will be used to find the induced current in each ring of the aluminum tube, the Biot-Savar law, which is used to calculate the magnetic field on each current-carrying ring, as well as Newton's second law, which is used to update the position and velocity of the magnet in the code. In order to produce this lab, we will be using a bar magnet, roll of aluminum foil, and a smartphone. First, we need to measure the length, width, and radius of the aluminum foil tube. Next, we need to find the north pole on the magnet, which can be done with a magnetometer app. Then, we will position the aluminum foil tube upright and use a phone to record the tube with both ends in frame. We can then drop the magnet through the tube and scrub through the recording to find the time it took for the magnet to travel the length of the tube. We'll then repeat the experiment five times and calculate the average time between the trials. During the lab, some observations were made about the magnet falling through the tube. The magnet fell much slower through the aluminum foil compared to free space. This is because of the flux increasing within the tube as the magnet enters. The increasing flux creates an electric current in the opposite direction to the magnet, which creates an induced magnetic field. This field pulls upward on the falling magnet, slowing it down. Additionally, we cannot use a ferrous tube since these tubes contain iron. Iron has magnetic properties and the magnet would simply stick to the tube rather than falling through it. The aluminum foil had a length of 30.4 cm, width of 1 cm, and a radius of 2.5 cm. The magnet had a magnetic dipole moment of 2.16 with a mass of 24.1 grams. The experimental times are shown in the chart on the right with an average time of 2.196 seconds. In order to compare the experimental and computed times, we'll be using glow script to calculate the time taken for the magnet to fall through the foil. We first must establish the dimensions of the roll of aluminum foil, as well as the mass and magnetic dipole moment of the magnet, which is the same as previously mentioned. In order to calculate the magnetic field, we must create a function that uses the Biot's of our law to calculate the magnetic field at position r. We also have to calculate the change in magnetic flux due to the falling magnet, which is calculated using Faraday's law. Next, we create the simulation loop of the magnet falling through the aluminum foil tube. The loop calculates the current from the EMF in the previous code, as well as the magnetic force based on that current. It then calculates the net force on the magnet and uses Newton's second law to continuously update the position and velocity of the magnet as it falls through the loop. The glow script computer simulation is shown on the left, where the magnet is dropped through the tube. The graph on the right plots the velocity in relation to time, and the computational time for the magnet in the tube is calculated to be 2.987 seconds. In order to interpret the simulation, we must determine the direction of the currents. Since the north end of the magnet pointed down into the tube, and the magnet was getting closer to the loop as it fell, there was a greater magnetic flux in the downward direction through the loop. The induced B field by the loop points in the opposite direction as the change in the magnetic flux, which results in the induced current shown by the blue being in the counterclockwise direction, while the red current is in the clockwise direction. If the magnet poles were to be flipped, then the red and blue currents would swap directions, but the position and velocity of the magnet would be the same, resulting in the same time. The experimental time in the tube was 2.196 seconds, while the glow script computed time was around 2.987 seconds. This is a difference around 30%. The computational system could be made more accurate with a more accurate magnetic moment value, as the current value from lab 3 may be slightly off, which could skew the result. In order to analyze the slopes of the velocity versus time plot, where the slope is negative, the only force acting on the magnet is gravity which causes the magnet to fall with increasing velocity. When the slope is zero, the force of gravity and magnetic force from the aluminum foil is equal, causing the net force on the magnet to be zero and having zero acceleration, hence the constant velocity. To conclude, the tested time for the magnet to fall through the aluminum tube was 2.196 seconds, while the computed time was 2.987 seconds, which is a difference of around 30.5%. To reflect, if the resistivity of the conductor were reduced to as close to zero as possible, then the induced current and magnetic force on the magnet would increase, resulting in the magnet falling slower. Additionally, if holes were cut into the aluminum foil tube, the resistance would increase due to less complete rings. This would cause the induced current and magnetic force to decrease, causing the magnet to fall faster. Thank you for watching.